Greetings everyone out there in virtual world. It's your girl Takayi coming to you today dealing with crystal magic and the quartz. Okay, the first quartz. This quartz here is in its raw state. And I also have a quartz that is in its tumble state. That one is more smooth. Um, a lot of people use the pointed quartz or the one, what is it called? In clusters for a lot of healing. So with that I'm going to tell you the basic properties of the quartz. The quartz in appearance is long pointed crystal, transparent, milky, often in clusters and comes in all sizes. It's easily obtainable and pretty much worldwide you can find the quartz. And the book I'm getting this from is The Crystal Bible by Judy Hall. Excellent book. She has another one too. And I'm actually a real visual person, so I just like looking at the pictures. And sometimes I'll have a stone that doesn't, I'm not sure what the name of it is, and I can look it up and find out what it is. So this is an excellent book. And um, as far as for the quartz, I'm going to give you the metaphysical property, and then I'll give you the healing property of it. So for the metaphysical property, at a spiritual level, the crystal, this crystal raises energy to the highest possible level, containing every color possible. Clear quartz works on all levels of being, storing information like a natural computer. These crystals are a spiral, a spiritual library waiting to be accessed. Quartz has the ability to dissolve karmic seeds. So it's actually good in some of the water magic rituals and releasing old contracts. It enhances psychic abilities and attunes you to your spiritual purpose. Used in meditation, quartz filters out distractions. Quartz is the most efficient receptor for programming. So I would say this is excellent in um, getting rid of your own contracts and creating new contracts and reprogramming in hey, I'm back with the quartz. Um, just to reiterate, we have the quartz in the tumbled, tumbled state, which has been processed, and then we have it in its pointed or clustered state, more in its raw form. It is transparent. It can be milky, translucent. It contains all of the colors of the spectrum. And um, here's a picture of it in its clusters. That's how it's usually found. So with that, I'm going to go to the healing properties. Quartz is a master healer and can be used for any condition. It stimulates the immune system and brings the body into balance. It's excellent for soothing burns. Quartz harmonizes all of the chakras and aligns the subtle bodies. Position, it can be placed as appropriate. So with this, what that's saying is that you can use the quartz pretty much on any part of your body depending on your ailment or whatever the issue is that you have. So with this, I'm going to show you how to make a magic wand using the quartz for healing. Greetings everyone, I'm back. i um, going to start showing you how to make the wand, the magic wand, by showing you the materials that I gathered. Um, first thing I gathered was a stick out from nature, which I've had for at least a year now. I've been meaning to make a magic wand out of it, and today I'm going to actually do that. So, here's the stick that I chose. I took the bark off of it. And I found it very interesting because it had a nice spiraling energy, which I felt was very conducive to um, transferring energy or transferring energy. And somehow I'm going to find a way to put this quartz on the end, not on that end. Maybe on this end. 
find a way to put this quartz on here. So that's the idea. And cut the stick to a better length. Here are some of the objects that I um, plan on placing onto the magic wand. This little goddess emblem that I got from a New Age store. Uh, just a reflective piece of mirrored image. Uh, my grandmother gave me. I don't know if you can see that. Carry bead, uh, golden circle representing the womb, butterfly metamorphosis, and just a band of jewels that I actually actually got this off of the baby fat perfume bottle. But um, if anybody has it, there's like an actual ring on there with some jewels on it, which I thought would give it a nice little look. And a seed bead bracelet that I weaved on my weaving loom with the yin and yang symbol. Lastly, a tassel. I may add a few other things, but these are the basic things I'm going to try to incorporate into the magic wand. So stay tuned.